witches and of course muggles. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing really well. So today I thought that it was about time that I did an updated top 10 Harry Potter collection. Now my collection has grown over the years and I have done one of these videos in the past but I've had a lot of new additions to my collection and to my shelf so I'm very intrigued to see what makes my top 10. So if you guys would like to see what makes the list then keep on watching and of course I will let you know what it is, where it's from, how much it was when I bought it, and is it still available? So I will leave all of that information in the description down below as well if you would like to check those out. But let's get started. Oh, and hey, if you're brand new here, hello, welcome. Don't forget you can click the subscribe button if you like to become part of our weird, magical online family. But let's get started because we've got 10 Harry Potter things to discuss. Okay, so coming in at number 10 and we're gonna go all the way to my top favorite. Number 10 is actually something that I got last year. My friend Katie and Jeff bought this for me and it was such a lovely gift and <laughs> because we actually had a Ford Anglia that we were going to do up, it's a nice memory for me as well. Now for those of you that didn't know already, I don't have the Ford Anglia anymore. It was gonna cost thousands to do it up to the kind of standard that we wanted so I did unfortunately have to say goodbye but this is such a nice memory for me this is a Ford Anglia die cast replica and it's so cute all of the little doors do in fact open like so and it's like Wee! <laughs> and even I think even the boot opens or the trunk if you're um, from the US so the trunk opens as well as the bonnet as we call it here is it the hood in America I swear this opens uh, yep there we go it opens the other way though so there we have it I just think this is so cute it's definitely one of my favorite miniature replicas that I have on my shelves. Now I think my favourite part of this <laughs> is actually the little Harry Potter that came with this Fort Anglia because let me zoom in. He just... it... it I don't know. The paint job just makes me laugh. Uh, it looks like his glasses are painted on but I just love how kind of dorky he looks. <laughs> so yes, you do get a little Harry Potter with the Ford Anglia when you purchase it. Unfortunately, he can't sit in it, but he tends to just sit behind it on my shelf. But yeah, so this is my top 10. This is 25 pounds. You can get it from Amazon and it is still available. Number nine. Now, number nine was definitely in my previous top 10 and it has remained because it's quite a rare piece. This is a teacup and saucer and it's Professor Dolores Umbridge's teacup and saucer with the little kittens on. I bought this many years ago from the Warner Brothers Studio Tour in London and it's really pretty. Like the design on there is just so nice. I love the little kitten and there you go. It was exclusive to the Warner Brothers Studio Tour in London. Now I did try to figure out how much I paid for this and I even tried to look back in videos, but I don't think I made one about it. And I just have a vision of a sticker that says 19 pounds on it. So it might have been around 19 pounds. If I'm wrong and you purchase this and you still know the price, please leave it in a comment down below. But I don't recall it being too expensive for a teacup and saucer. And it has been one of my favorite things that I've had on my shelves in a very long time. It is made out of actual ceramic. Unfortunately this was discontinued so I don't think that you can get this anymore unless there's any going on eBay but yeah if you do manage to get your hands on this I do recommend it. I did end up making a bit of an umbrage shelf. I know. Who is she? I just can't help myself. Umbridge's aesthetic is everything. The pink, the kittens, the kind of sickly sweet. It just makes me laugh. So yes, that is number nine in my Harry Potter collection. Okay, number eight. Now this is a remake. This isn't the original Hermione's bag, but it's one of the newer versions of it. So this is by Noble Collection and this costs around 45 pounds to buy. And you'll be pleased to know it is still available. So this is a bag. The details on it is lovely. I have kept inside the tissue paper so that it kind of holds its shape. Otherwise it's a little bit floppy. But 
you can actually open this bag. I'm gonna regret taking this off later, I can feel it. Um, <laughs> so it does open like so. It opens like, wow, I forgot how wide this opens. Like, you could fit so much in there. Like, I kinda wanna dive in, but the extendable charm's not on there at the moment. But yeah, so this is official, it's the Noble Collection replica. And to be fair, the amount of detail that is on it, I do think it's worth the 45 pound price tag. So if you pull it, it'll close like so. And it's just delicate and detailed. Like look at all the beading on the bag. I just think it's so pretty. This I got a couple of years ago, but yeah, I really like it. it and it lives on my divination shelf. I know it's not really on theme, but the color went with everything. I do recommend keeping the stuffing when you buy it, unless you're gonna use it. As a question, has anyone got this replica and you actually use it as like a bag to go out in? Cause I want to know like, would it last? Would it, do you know what I mean? Is it durable? <laughs> like it's got some long little, I guess you could like, you know, swing it over your arm like that. <laughs> but either way, this is still available if you want it. And this was number eight. Number seven is something that is very special and it is the Philosopher's Stone or the Sorcerer's Stone if you're from elsewhere. But to me, it is the Philosopher's Stone and it's in this beautiful display case. Like, look at that top-down view. I know that you've got like the reflection on there, but it's so pretty. And when you take the dome off, oh my goodness, like that is the Philosopher's Stone. I don't want to take it out, but you can take it off this stand and like hold it. And it looks like the real deal. And I just love how, special it feels and luxurious with the velvet we've got like the golden stand which you can maneuver to make the stone fit and it's even got a little label i did not just drop the philosopher's stone oh my god well whilst it's out of its stand here is the philosopher's stone itself it does have like some paintwork on there to make it look a little bit more aged oh my god look at that shine look at that cut look at this kind of beautiful deep amber color it's yeah oh it's so nice i feel like it should have been higher up my list but no it is staying at number seven now this piece is still available and it is from noble collection and it will set you back around 85 british pounds so if you want to treat yourself and you want something very special to represent the first film then yes i would recommend this beautiful piece uh from noble collection the philosopher's stone next up is another noble collection piece coming in at number six now this is professor horace slughorn's hourglass and it is absolutely divine and yes it does work this will set you back 135 pounds but look at it it's made out of glass you've got sand in the middle and it's just so decorative like just look at those serpents that are on the top there's three of them that go all the way around they have the exact same design on the bottom too. It's just so pretty and it's just a very nice thing. So yes, the sand will fall as you can hopefully see on this camera, but yes, the sand will go through. And I do remember years ago, I was like, I'm gonna time it. This is like, must've been about six years ago now or something. I still haven't timed it. Leave a comment down below if anyone has this and you know how long it runs for. I know that it's an hourglass, but I don't think it does run for an hour. I just have a feeling. I feel like I need to test it. I will do it. I will get around to doing it. But either way, so this is still available and it's a really nice full-sized replica from Noble as well, but they just know how to make good quality replicas and they really do feel like the real deal that are taken from the movie sets themselves. Obviously it's not, but it's nice to feel like you've got a little piece of the Wisting world. Next up coming in at number five is something that actually got discontinued but then was so in demand that they're bringing it back, but at a higher price. And it is by Noble Collection as well. These used to be about half the price to purchase. And they are the Puking Pastels Girl 
bookend as well as the bubble boy bookend as well now these are definitely some of my favorite pieces in my collection i just love how vibrant they are i just love the whole wheezes wizards wheezes aesthetic my shelves looking quite empty without them sat there so yes as i said these used to be around half the price they are now so these are coming back i believe very soon so keep your eyes peeled on noble collection or follow them on their social media because they are are coming back at 120 pounds each per piece and I know that that sounds quite expensive but these things are just expensive to get made as well as their materials but I will say even if I didn't have these in my collection right now I think I would treat myself I mean you guys know that I would treat myself <laughs> because they are just so beautiful here is the bubble boy and I just love the clear the clear acrylic that's all of the bubbles just coming out of his mouth and I love his little outfit like these are heavy guys these are very weighty um there is even velvet on the bottom to stop you ruining any of your surfaces and obviously we've got the flat base there so that you can use them as bookends i obviously don't use them as bookends i use them as display pieces but i love him i think he's absolutely awesome uh as well as puking pastels girl please excuse me because there is dust all over her pastels i need to clean them so this is puking pastels girl uh there are all her pastels right there into her little weasley's puking pastels bucket and yep i just love her she's so cool and such a character but yes these are fantastic so if you are thinking of adding these to your collection and you wonder what the quality is like I do recommend these they do not feel cheap put it that way they do feel like very well made and they're very beautiful and I've had these for a little while now and yeah I'm just really pleased to have these in my collection so yeah love them my top four I feel as though you're going to say that I'm cheating because I've made a very umbrella statement and put books. That's right, not one book, many. I couldn't not show these. These are a lot of the replica books. I think all of them. There might be one or two dotted around, but these are all of the replica books that make my heart glow now all of these bar one were gifted to me uh made by some magical friends so i probably won't be able to link these but i will show you them because i feel as though you will really enjoy seeing them i'm gonna start off with the one that is newest to my collection i just put my books over there and that is this one this is rita skeeter's the life and lies of albus Dumbledore I got this made custom made from someone that I found on a forum on the internet it does it sounds dodgy I know <laughs> but either way I had to get my hands on a book that looked like this we've got Rita on the back it's an actual full book and there's even like <laughs> dear Batty thanks for your help you said everything even if you don't remember Rita so it came with that um it came in like a little thing that said oh Look, there he is, Albus Percival, Wolfric Brian Dumbledore. That is one of my favourite books. That cost... It was around £120. I know, I am crazy. Uh, <laughs> the rest of them were kindly gifted by my friend. He made them and sent them to me because he knew that I would like them. One of them you've definitely seen a lot on this channel and that is the Advanced Potion Making Book. It is the one that belonged to the Half-Blood Prince. Again, full book, full notes from the Half-Blood Prince himself. I'm surprised this isn't number one, but I, oh my goodness, look, oh my god, I know, I know, I, yes, if, if my house was burning down, this is one of the things that I would grab and save. <laughs> then there is also the Hogwarts A History replica, which is so nice, again, made by a friend. Oh, look at that gold foiling, look at that gold foiling, um, <laughs> look at these, like, oh speechless so we've got hogwarts history which is beautiful also have a history of magic which is oh look at that foil can you oh yes oh yes this is a chunky book look at this got all the filter on the background and would you believe another full book 
So there's that. And then last but not least, the essential defense against the dark arts. <laughs> this is probably the biggest of the lot. And again, it's all, it's beautiful. Like, look at it. It's, I need to give this a full read. I haven't sat down and read fully through all of these books. But to have those replicas feels really special. Obviously, I cannot put a price on these because they were gifted. But I will leave my friend's details down below that did kindly make them for me. If you would like to check him out, I know that he is coming out with a Potioneers guidebook, I think. Potioneers pocketbook. The Potioneers pocketbook. And it's something that is designed all himself. And it looks like it should be a textbook from a very magical world. So I will leave his link down below. Let's move on to number three. The next piece I have had a lot of questions about over the years, especially when I do my shelf tours. Now, this is one of a kind. You cannot get it anywhere. It's custom made. It was a prototype from a previous project. They're not gonna be sold. So this is like the only one in the world, but it's made out of clear. Oh my God, look at it. It's made out of a clear acrylic resin and Honestly, it is broken. I had to fix it. The reason this was a one of a kind is because it was too complicated to make in a short turnaround. So I got this and it was in pieces, like pieces, like all of these turrets weren't attached and I got them kind of just in a, in a box and I got the super glue out. I was like, I need to fix this because look at it. It looks pretty impressive as it is right now as you're seeing it, but on my shelves, underneath there is this kind of like hollowed out section which was going to be a space for an led light that you could just switch on it would it was going to be battery run but i have lights now that are actually built into my shelves it's one of these little circular spotlights but on the bottom so when i put it on it lights up and oh my goodness it looks magical so is this still available no is it going to be no what's the price priceless to me um <laughs> but yeah so there we have it i just it's gorgeous i don't know i mean i was gonna say i don't know why there isn't like official ones of these but maybe i do because they're just so tricky to make something with that much detail perhaps but i just it's one of my most prized possessions it's just so cool number two now it was going to be my nimbus 2000 yes i have a life-sized full-sized replica of a nimbus 2000 it's got the bristles it's got the wooden like handle with the gold inlay i stored this in my garage i found the the end of it that it's all wrapped up in saran wrap but the handle, it's apparated somewhere. It's its probably in the room of requirement. My garage is basically the room of requirement at this point. I would have put it at number two, but instead I did find something else. It lives in my bedroom. That's how much I like it. And it's really heavy. It doesn't look really heavy, but I can assure you that it is. Um, so this is the mirror of, I'm trying not to blind you with my studio lighting. Um, where should I put this? There you go, you can have a look at my ceiling and my camera from above. Um, this is the mirror Verised. This itself is made out of metal and it's aged and it's glorious and yeah, it's noble collection. Currently it's saying out of stock. I don't think it's been discontinued. I think they're just, a little bit backlogged with COVID and making things. So I'm hoping that it comes back, but this will set you back around 55 pounds, which to be honest, for a mirror which has a kickstand at the back, I don't think is too bad. Please ignore the bit of tape here. I put that on because this does lean against a wall and because it's made out of metal, it can mark walls. So I was just protecting my walls with a bit of masking tape. But yes, it does have a kickstand at the back so that you can put it on a vanity. But I do think that it leans a little bit too far backwards. Um, that's why I've like propped it up against the wall. But let me show you some of the details. So here it is. Um, it's got the beautiful writing at the top and 
it just makes me so happy to have a little piece of the mirror verised in my house. I know it's like not the real one, but it feels like a miniature version. Someone shrunk it down. And honestly, it looks beautiful. I think they did a fantastic job of designing this. And the fact that it's practical, that's why it's so high up the list, is that you can use this as a mirror. And it's just, I mean, look at it. It's... It's very beautiful. It's a really nice size. It's a perfect size for a vanity mirror or something in your bedroom, because uh, let's be real, I wouldn't be able to fit the real mirror Verised in my bedroom. So there we have it, number two. So I know what you're all thinking, Cherry, well, what's number one? If it's not the broom, like, what is it? Please do not be judging my dusty diadem. <laughs> That's right, my top favourite piece hasn't changed. It is the Ravenclaw Lost Diadem, which is apt because I have a sign on my studio door that says Room of Requirement, so she is where she belongs. This is gorgeous and I... I remember buying this. I bought it from the Warner Brothers Studio Tour. At the time, I bought it for, I think it was £119, and it was the most expensive Harry Potter replica slash piece that I'd ever treated myself to, but I was just like, I need that. Like, look at it. I feel like a magpie. Now, this now costs £160 due to inflation and whatnot, but it is a noble collection piece, and it is still available, which a lot of you will probably be quite pleased to know. But yes, it comes in this beautiful display case. I do have uh, some stuff stored in here. I, <laughs> look at these guys. I've got um, all of the Goblet of Fire paper pieces. These are the official ones from the tour. This one here, my friend made for me. And there's like ribbon. Oh my God, it's so cute. So they all live together in the box. So let's take her out and give you a more in-depth Oh my God, I forgot how beautiful this is out of the box. A lot of people are like, is it wearable? This could be worn for a wedding or a party or something. If you had the correct hairstyle wrapped around these kind of edges here, but it's not a traditional like tiara that will just sit very comfortably, but it does fit around my head but it's not gonna it's gonna keep dropping down but yes you could definitely like tie some french braids around the actual long tiara part to keep it in your hair like i i know that that would be possible would i wear it no because i'm not a i'm not a ravenclaw but good lord look at how it shines it definitely needs a bit of a clean um <laughs> i can see fingerprints and dust all over that beautiful jewel but isn't it just stunning i mean I've just always had such a fondness for the Ravenclaw Lost Diadem and kind of makes me want to be a Ravenclaw a little bit, but as a piece, the fact that it comes in a beautiful display case and it even has like a very specific like mold to fit it so you can slide it back in. And a lot of people asked, how do I keep this stand upright like this? Because normally, Ooh, there we go. Um, it arrives like this in a beautiful box. Oh my God, so, so beautiful. And if you want it to stand up, it's like, oh, well, how am I? And that's quite wide back. So I use a little hair clip. It's, it's nothing special. I just pop it into the back right there. And then if we're lucky, it holds it up. So that's how I keep it. So it's just peeking out and I would say protected by dust, but it really isn't. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so there we have it, number one. Now, of course, these are just my top 10 in my Harry Potter collection. I know a lot of you guys have Harry Potter collections at home, so I would love to know what is your top 10? I want to see comments. I want to see what they are, where it's from, why it's your, like, Give us the info. Sharing is caring, okay? Um, so yeah, I'm intrigued to see if things that are on my list made it onto some of your guys' lists. So let me know, leave a comment down below. And hey, if you've got this far in the video, firstly, thank you very much. And secondly, please, 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 do go ahead and give this video a quick magical thumbs up. It's free, it takes a second. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you thought of my top 10 and I really hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. I'm gonna go dust my shelves. They clearly really need it. <laughs>